So guys what if Naruto went into Bleach Harem World and Orihime Aya's slave movie? Naruto stood before the one man who had made his childhood a living hell, it had been 16 years since the Kurama the Nine-Tailed Fox appeared on the outskirts of Konoha the village hidden in the leaves. For 16 years the people of the leaf never knew the reason why the fox suddenly appeared attacking their village believing that the demon went on a rampage. In those 16 years after the Nine Tails attacked Naruto the boy chosen to house the demon after the great fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze his father sealed it in his newborn body. Learning of the fox Naruto had strived to prove that he wasn't the beast reborn as the people of Konoha saw him as, Naruto became a great ninja and most of the citizens and ninja of the village changed their opinions of him. Then one day he learned the truth about why the Kyubi had attacked and the real reason his mother and father had died leaving him and orphan Naruto had trained until he was able to learn sage mode from the toad summons he held a contract with surpassing his master and then with the help of the Jinchuriki of Gyuki the Hachibi no Kyogyu killer B again control of the his Jinchuriki chakra mode. Once the fourth great war started Naruto and killer B joined the battle turning the tides in the alliance of the four great shinobi nations favor and drawing out Tobi. Tobi had revived the six Jinchuriki along with their biju with the power of the Rinnegan he took from Nagato's eye socket, Naruto and B fought all six of them with Naruto finally gaining Kurama's help and full control until the Goku the Yanbi ate Naruto and to have the boy's mind to link with all the biju in their Jinchuriki. At first Goku told Naruto the reason why he and his brothers and sisters hated humans then he explained their relationship with the Sage of Six Paths and have saddened they were at his death with the Kyubi taken it the hardest out of all of them. Naruto after hearing the story valued to win the war and gained Yagura the Sanbi Jinchuriki who has under Tobis mind control during the time of the Bloody Mist, then Roshi the Yanbi Jinchuriki had insisted that that they wait for Naruto and help him, after that all the Jinchuriki and Biju introduced themselves, and offered Naruto some of their powers. Naruto then in the real world pulled the chakra receivers from the beast's bodies and Tobi was forced to seal them inside the demonic statue. Tobi would tell Naruto that he hadn't changed a thing until Naruto explained that he talked to the Biju and Jinchuriki learning all their names and teasing Tobi for the fact that he didn't know the Biju's names. Even after all this Naruto was captured in the end and the Nine Tails was extracted but Naruto lived thought the extraction and after Sasuke who had joined the alliance side after talking to Itachi and learning that Tobi had been deceiving him along fought the masked man. Sasuke would make Tobi retreat but is too weak to fight and awaking Naruto's resolve and Naruto gaining the Rinnegan. So here we find Naruto Sage cloak on with holes in it blood seeping from under his headband, Toad Sage eyes staring down Tobi who had lost his mask showing his wrinkled old face and Sharingan and Rinnegan staring into Naruto's eyes. This is it Tobi, I should put an end to your moon eye plan and send your soul to the Shinigami forbidden jutsu hell's ten ring gate, Naruto exclaimed as the seal on his stomach pulsed then a black door with an eye and chains on it appeared before him. The door's chain started to shake and rattle as a black mist began to seep out when the door began to open, Madara felt a strong pull on as he stood before the gate on hell. How can the Jinchuriki call upon that gate it should be impossible, you fool by summoning that gate you will be dragged into hell along with me, Madara exclaimed as the chains on the gate shattered. The moon that had the eye of the Jubi reflecting on the surface started releasing dark omnipotent demonic chakra in reaction to the gate. The ghetto Mazo the statue of the outer path that stood behind Madara began to absorb the demonic energy from it moon. It grew until it was bigger than the tallest mountain in the world, the nine eyes begin to fuse together creating one huge eye at the center of its forehead. Then from the beast's tail bone ten red tails rose out becoming as large at the body itself, Naruto and Tobi stared in awe of the great beast before them as the upper and lower body became bone with a healthy shine to it then gained muscle, skin and finally red fur that shined in the moonlight. The head also went through this process along with gaining ears that looked like bigger versions of the cubis, once the transformation was finished the jubi was reborn into the world again. At last the jubi is whole once again and you child have lost Tobi said his sinister voice echoing in Naruto's head, shaking his head Naruto stared at Tobi with determination he flared in the doorway to hell opened all the way. Translucent black arms that looked like the vectors from a Diclonius began appearing out of the blood red void that was the inside of the doorway. The arms all shot towards Toby wrapping around his body, Toby who was shocked at that he can't escape by becoming intangible. What is this why am I not able to escape these restrictions, Toby exclaimed as he began to struggle in a vain attempt to escape. The reason why you can't escape is because the doors is feeding on the chakra that you try use and the chakra that resides in your body until you are drained of all your reserves, a voice echoed through both Naruto and Toby's mind. Who are you and why are you in my head, Naruto asked holding his head although he wasn't in pain. This that you ten tails, have you come to be sealed in me, Madara asked a crazed look in his eyes, 
then without warning the jubis impaled Madara with one of its tails then move his body in front of the gate to hell. Madara Uchiha for your crimes against the mortal world you have been sentenced to the darkest pits of hell, the jubi voice echoed though both Madara and Naruto's mind. Madara who had hacking up blood had a look of pure terror on his face, he began to struggle but he only succeeds in bleeding out more. No you can't do this to me I am your master you do as I tell you to, the ancient Uchiha exclaimed as he began losing control of his body, the jubi then thrusts its tail into the gate along with Madara. Once inside the body of the ancient Uchiha's body was torn to pieces, after that jubi removed its tail from the gate it slammed shut then disappeared leaving a very exhausted Naruto and the reawakened great demon. Jubi then turns its attention to Naruto and its body begins to shrink down. The body then takes on the form of a human that was feminine that is about 5 foot 6. Her beasts were a G cup and she had a great body with long hairless legs and flared hips and a slim waist, she has waist length red hair with shorter bangs in the Heim style, her eyes were red with black pupils that seemed to hold some warmth in them when directed at Naruto. Naruto had never before seemed such a beautiful creature in his life and although he knew she was the most powerful demon to have ever lived he wasn't scared by her presence. Jubi walks up to Naruto with a warm smile on her face and began to reach out to touch him. Naruto thinking that she was going to snap his neck and then eat him sighed in exhaustion and closed his eyes waiting for the end only to be shocked when he felt her arms wrap around his neck and her lips touch his cheek. Naruto opened his eyes and stared into the Jubi's red ones unable to say anything because of the shock and confusion, seeing the blonde sage facial expression the Jubi began to giggle at him much to his embarrassment. I am happy to finally meet you Naruto-kun. The Ten Tails said getting Naruto's attention once again, Naruto then noticed her other appendages. She had two horns on top of her hair that looked like cat ears, her ten red tails that were connected to her tailbone, another thing Naruto noticed that she was stark naked. Snapping back to reality Naruto jumped up out of reflex startling the Jubi then he fell on his butt. What's going on why are you naked? Naruto asked freaking out about seeing her naked in the fact that she seems comfortable with it. Jubi seeing his reaction couldn't stop laughing at him which seemed to calm Naruto down, her voice rang like a soft melody through Naruto's head and he felt at peace by the sound. Naruto suddenly felt extremely tried and he began fall backwards with this eye glazed over, before the darkness consumed him, he saw Jubi's smiling face hover over his and he felt his head land on something soft. Naruto-kun you have saved the elemental nations and your job here is done, however because you used the gate you can no longer stay here and I know you realized this. Jubi told the sleeping boy as she stroked his blonde hair. Though your journey here is finished as far from over young one, and this time I will be there for you because it was your kindness that dispelled the hatred from within my soul when it was shattered, the Jubi said as she lifted him up in her arms. Using two of her ten tails, she opened a rift two feet in front of her, within the rift it looked like a dimension of chaos that any human would fail to successfully get though without having their soul lost in the chaos. Smiling down at Naruto's unconscious form she walked through the chaos with the portal closing and they both disappeared from the world of shinobi never to be seen by the people that he had once called friends ever again. Naruto sighed as he steps out of the dark corridor into Karakura town, analyzing his surroundings, Naruto noticed that he appeared on top of a tall building overlooking the town. Naruto closed his eyes and he breathes in the clean reishi filled air and then exhaled as he looked out at the city, Karakura is a small town that has been having a lot of strange occurrences recently. Again Naruto sighed as he thought about his life and the events that had been happening these past 12 months, Jubi had been training him and named him her successor. Thinking back, Naruto recalled the time after Jubi had taken him from the elemental nation, he couldn't help the smile that spread across his face and the groan that came afterward. Flashback. Opening his eyes Naruto found that he was staring up at something that was hovering over his face. Because Naruto's eyesight was still blurry he couldn't determine what it was that he was seeing so, he reaches out to grab it with both of his hands, when his hand came into contact with the objects he gave them a squeeze. Feeling them he first noticed that they were very soft and that they seemed to radiate their own source of heat, intrigued by this he gave them another squeeze. This time he heard a moan that seemed to come from the objects and that sound made Naruto turn whiter than snow. I see that you are awake and have gotten acquainted with my twins, exclaimed the amused voice of the one person in the whole world that Naruto would never want to be in the situation with. With speed that seemed to surpass the flying rage and jutsu Naruto slammed into the far wall of the room he found himself in. His facial expression was one of horror and he felt like he was going to be mauled, that is until he heard the women begin to giggle and rose off the bed that he just realized they had been on. Jubi began to make her towards Naruto with a sway to her hips and a seductive look on her face followed by a light blush. 
You know if you want to touch them all you have to do is ask me and I will allow you to feel them as long as you want, Jubi said as she ran her finger along his bare chest. Naruto had sweat rolling down his face as it turned a scarlet red as he felt blood rush in two directions towards his two heads, because of her supreme senses Jubi could easy smell his arousal and she felt that she had better stop before she became intoxicated by it. Relax Naruto-kun it's not like I plan to eat you or something, so come and sit down on the bed as we have a lot to discuss, Jubi said trying to get him to come down but Naruto just seemed to get even more worked up. Naruto-kun just relax okay take a deep breath, that's it now exhale, good boy, Jubi said as Naruto did as she told him to finally coming down, Jubi had then led him to the bed. Jubi first sat down then she laid his head on her lap when he crawled on the bed, not once realizing the fact that he was only wearing his old torn orange pants. Sighing as she mentally prepared herself for this conversation she began to run her fingers through Naruto's hair, taking a deep breath she began talking. First Naruto let me say that we are at my castle in Makai or the demon world, Jubi said as she waited for Naruto's having guessed this as she was at one time the demon queen before she came to the elemental nations gave her a nod. Since you were banished from the nations for opening the gate which was the rule established by Shinigami-chan and also I made you the prince of Makai and my successor, she told Naruto. Also as the new prince I turned you into a full demon, she added before Naruto could react to being told that he was the new prince of hell, for a while all was quiet. Then Naruto sighed as he just took it in strides, so I am a demon now huh? Well after bounding with your tailed breasts I have a good understanding on how they felt during those times, but what I would like to know why did you name me your successor? Naruto asked the ten-tailed goddess. Smiling down at the young man that she was most fond of she leaned down and captured his lips with her own shocking Naruto. Naruto it's because of you that all of the hatred in my heart has been dispelled. Remember that time during the war where you were able to speak with my avatars, how you got all of them to trust and so of their power, learning each of their names and the Jinchuriki, the Jubi praised Naruto. How my ninth avatar Kurama was finally able to set aside his hatred and had helped you in completing the Cubus Sage mode, you rejected the monster Kyubi to befriend Kurama the one who has been with you since the beginning. All of your actions since they have been what have created a future leader of Makai and also there is a lot I will train you until you are the strongest demon under me for one year and then we will see how you do on the field alright Naruto, she said getting a nod of acceptance from the half demon. Then here I got some clothes for you to wear, I will wait for you in the hall so once your dress come out and we will get started, she said as Naruto raised his head from her lap and she headed to the door. Wait Jubi I have a one last question to ask you, Naruto said get the women to turn to him as he stood from the bed. Tell me what your true name is as I refuse to call you by your title as you have named he your heir as I know you don't like it when those close to you call you Jubi, said the half-breed making the women smile warmly at him. I thought you would say that soon and I am glad that you didn't wait to ask until later, she told him as she opened the door. My name is Amaterasu Okami no Megami, she said as she closed the door behind her with one of her red ten tails. Flashback end. When Amaterasu had gone all out recreating Naruto as a demon using the Kitsune demon chakra that Kurama left within Naruto and mixing in the wolf demon chakra from herself recreating his DNA until she made Naruto the perfect half fox half wolf demon. The past year had been hell for the young prince since the transformation looked time to actually kick in and start the changes, first his human ones disappeared while he grew wolf ears with black tips on top of his head. Naruto could say with certainty that this process sucked the most has have was forced to endure an extremely painful headache during the whole thing. This made him pass out for a few hours until he woke up at dawn the next day with a migraine. Next was his hair growing into the style that his father Minato had his in with the long bangs on each side of his face and his hair was long enough hiding ears, Naruto still had his whisker marks on each cheek. Naruto grew until he was 6 foot 2 with the body as in top physical form toned and hardened but not overly muscular with six-pack abs and strong legs. Finally Naruto wore a black wife beater under his new sage cloak which was red with black flames at the bottom like his old one and black pants and black boots. The training was worst of all as she worked him into the ground until he was dead tired, it got so bad that Naruto the stamina god was always dead tired each day and a few mornings. Damn slave driver has been trying to kill me for the past year and I think I was on the verge of death 128 times, Naruto thought hating the women's for her sick torture. Naruto was brought back to reality when he started feeling dark spiritual energy gather all around the city, this got Naruto curious as he heard the cries of creatures with white masks ring throughout the city. Never before had Naruto heard the cry of those creatures which so full of despair that it started to freak out all those who heard it in the town. What the hell is this, she had never aid anything about these creatures appearing here. There has town be a reason for them to be drawn here and I sense other spiritual pressure rising all over the place, 
Naruto thought as he jumped down from the building he was perched on and began sprinting towards the close spirit signature that was human. Elsewhere, two hollows along with about twenty teens who seemed to be acting like zombies had surrounded three girls around a school, the first one that was directly behind those zombie-like students had a numb chandelier mask and had the appearance of a jellyfish. The jellyfish had six appendages at the bottom of its mask and three circles of protrusions at the top, the body is composed of twelve tentacles that were lavender in color, Num was sporting a hole above her mask where the tentacles meet. The second one was a giant scorpion with a green body, it was as big as a truck and had two large pincers the size of its own body, Naruto had just arrived when he saw what was happening. At first he thought about jumping in but that was until he saw the girl with black hair that was standing in front of the orange-haired teen with the big chest who was tending to a red-haired girl who was currently unconscious. The redhead's arm was had roots from the seed popping out and on the side of her face, seeing this Naruto decided to wait before jumping in. The black-haired girl just proclaimed that she was about to beat the hell out off the jellyfish which made it chuckle arrogantly, its voice sounded like an old woman's, then when the zombie students started advancing on her she easy took them all out. The scorpion looked at its accomplice in what Naruto could only guess was amusement, see your powers are so lame, can't even kill one girl without sneaking up on her, Naruto heard her say as he watched this girl growing interested in the girl. The numb jellyfish had an angry look on her face at what her partner had said then shot some seeds form her forehead, the girl who had been fighting had easily dodges the first few by jumping back. When she was about to charge at the jellyfish the redhead who was with the orange-haired girl grabbed her by the arm the redhead looked to be struggling trying to gain control of her arm. Tatsuki, please run, I can't control my arm, the redhead said as she continued to struggle with herself, Tatsuki had a shook look on her face as she said the girl's name that had grabbed her. Then Tatsuki and that Chizoru girl were both hit the jellyfish's seeds making Chizoru cry out and Tatsuki gasp in pain. Tatsuki was shot again this time in three places her shoulder, stomach and right leg. The orange-haired girl cried out to Tatsuki as she began to fall, the girl ran to her friend trying to catch her, and then she was suddenly kicked in the stomach. The girl fell to her knees and began coughing as the since she got the wind knocked out of her, Naruto winced when he saw the kick connected with the girl. When the girl looked up at her friend as Naruto felt the girl's spirit energy increase and the wind around them began to pick up, the girl Tatsuki called out Orihime as she stares down at the orange-haired girl as tears welled up in her eyes. Seeing the tears Orihime stood up and gave the girl a hug asking her not to cry, she then thanks the girl for always being there to protect her as she promised to do the same. Then her energy exploded around the two pushing all the other unconscious people away and shocking the two hollows. When the wind settled down, Naruto saw Orihime standing over Tatsuki who was unconscious on the ground, Orihime had a determined look on her face and six little creatures flying all around her. When Orihime took notice of them she became shocked at the fact that she had fairies flying around her and began to talk to her telling the girl who they were and what they did. Now Naruto was really interested in this as he had never before seen anything like what he was seeing now and he was almost tempted to go down there and talk to them until he heard the jellyfish hollow ask what was going on. Then she attacked Orihime with her seeds, Naruto heard Orihime chant something that one of the fairies told her to then an orange shield created by three of them blocked the seeds. Then Orihime did another chant to heal her two friends with an orange light seeing that the scorpion hollow was trying to do a sneak attack on the girl even though it had complained about its partner doing the same thing not too long ago. Naruto deciding that he wanted to see what happened next pulled out a kanai, suppressing his demonic chakra he flung it right at the scorpion which had some wind chakra channeled through it. The hollow didn't stand a chance as it pierced through its mask killing it instantly, seeing her partner die numb chandelier look afraid and began to look for the person that killed the scorpion. Seeing this one of the little fairies, the one with a bad attitude rushed Orihime to use his ability, with a shout of Tsubaki then her weird chant the fairies shoot towards the hollow that was too preoccupied at the moment. Sensing danger the hollow turned back to the girl but it was too late, Tsubaki had just pierced her right through the mask, the hollow screamed as it disintegrated. Well that was an interesting show now I might as well go see what else I can find and I sense that the guy who has been watching the fight will take care of the girl, Naruto said out loud no that the man had heard him. With that Naruto disappeared in an instant leaving the girls to the man, after Naruto had left Kazuki Urahara stepped out of the shadows looking in the direction Naruto had disappeared in. Kazuki was a tall light blonde haired man wearing a striped dark green and white bucket hat shadowing his eyes, he wore a dark green shirt and pants that were topped with a black coat with a white diamond pattern along the bottom half. He had on Geta sandals on and carried both a cane and a fan, the man had a grin on his face as he turned to Orihime and Tatsuki. Well that is one interesting guy, 
though he seems to not be just some ordinary spiritually aware human, Kazuki mused as he opened up a cell phone to make a call the smirk on his face still present. Rukia Kuchiki was currently through an open area in Karakura town attacking hollows left and right, the situation had began to get out of hand, the number of hollows that had been gathering in Karakura was rapidly increasing on stop. This is not good if the number of hollow that appear keeps on build up, Karakura will be overrun by nightfall, where did Ichigo get to I need to hurry and find him, she thought to herself as she tried to kill another hollow with her keto spells. Usually Rukia Kuchiki whose has become as strong as a fourth seat Shinigami could handle these little hollows that were considered small fry with ease, however since she had give Ichigo her soul reaper powers to protect his family and then became stuck in her gigai her powers were lower than an academy student. The hollow that she was currently fighting had been easy swatting her spells aside like they were annoying insects buzzing around its masked face. Growing frustrated at this and cursing Ichigo out in her mind Rukia began to set up for a stronger spell by chanting an incantation only to be interrupted by the hollow leaping at her trying to kill her. Suddenly before the hollow could catch her it got hit in the face by a flying down kick, seeing this Rukia had to sigh in relief thinking that it was Ichigo that had helped her. Then as she thought about it she wondered why Ichigo, who would usually fight hollows in shinigami mode suddenly fight them in his human form. All of a sudden the person who had saved her turned around towards her and tackled her trying to feel her up and instantly she knew who it was. Khan an artificial soul that inhabit Ichigo's body when the orange-haired teen was in his shinigami form was trying to molest Rukia while shouting out how happy he was that she was unharmed and how he had been dreaming of touching her breasts. Rukia who was irritated by this was pushing his face away from her chest with her foot trying to get the pervert off of her. Khan this is no time to be acting like an idiot. Wait if you have gotten back inside Ichigo's body that means that he has already transformed into a Shinigami, she said all the while holding both Khan's arms to keep him from touching her in an inappropriate way. Khan who was trying to get her to let go now as he was starting to lose feeling in his arms noticed that someone had just appeared behind Rukia. Hey calm down sis there is someone behind you, check it out, Khan told her getting her to look to see who was behind her. Uryu was standing above her with his usual I am superior than you soul reapers look on his face. Well that's a good sign, he said to himself although he was speaking out loud. This area is safe, Rukia Kukiki, so this is actually the first time I have spoken to you face to face, the young Quincy said completely ignoring the fact that Khan was also there much to the mod soul's dismay. Oh I get it now, Rukia said while kicking Khan off of her and standing to face the glasses wearing teen, this whole thing is your doing. Yes I started this contest between me and the substitute. Uryu told her which put Rukia on edge as it was already past the point of no return and she asks him what he planned to do next. There is no need to worry as I plan to eradicate all of the hollows before any innocent bystanders die, Ichigo may run out of strength during the battle but, even if he does I will protect the citizens of this town. If I am unable to accomplish that then this whole battle is meaningless, Uryu said as he clinched his bloody and cut up hand. I hope you mean it, Rukia said accepting the fact that they had to see it through to the end although she didn't like it. Elsewhere. Now wait just a minute. What are you trying to tell me here? Yasutora Chad Sato, a teenage Mexican student, asked Kazuki Urahara. He, Tatsuki, and Orihime, who had just found out that monsters called hollows exist in the world and that the two had acquired special powers to fight them, were in a state of denial. They and passed out after the battle only to wake up in this man Kazuki Urahara's home. Um, all this stuff about soul reapers and hollows is just so sudden, Orihime, the busty orange haired teen with the Shun Shun Rika powers, told Kazuki. Yeah, you expect yous to believe the bullshit that you are trying to sell us, do we look stupid to you? Tatsuki yelled at Kazuki, not believing it even though she just fought one and she could see it clear as day along with normal spirits. Then tell me, do you deny the fact that you were attacked just now? Kazuki asked them, his voice set in a monotone, getting an um from both teens. Ichigo Kurosaki a soul reaper who is fighting hollows even as we speak, and the strong spiritual he is releasing in that battle has had an influence on you. So now you know however, it's up to you whether or not you choose to open the gate that has appeared before you, Kazuki finished then the door behind him opened and Tessai a tall muscle toned light tan skinned man with cornrows, a large handlebar mustache connected to his long sideburns and wearing rectangular shaped glasses walked into the room. Excuse me boss, Tessai said getting Kazuki's attention. The sky rift is beginning to open and all preparations are all set. Well then let's go, Kazuki said as he to walk out the door then he stopped and looked back at the three teens. You did want proof right, then come see for yourself what lies behind the gate, and with that Kazuki walks out the door and leads them to where the battle begins. Under the sky rift in the town, 
Ichigo and Uryu had met up around the same time Tatsuki, Orihime, Chad woke up. The two were currently back to back surrounded by hollows killing them left and right. The sky rift that was in the sky over them was getting bigger by the minute but the two were too preoccupied to notice, all of a sudden a powerful spiritual pressure descended upon them. Then out of the rift came a giant white hand and began to open the rift wider and then a huge hollow the size of a skyscraper stepped out of the rift. Rukia who had been watching from the sidelines stared at the giant hollow in fear as she knew that they couldn't handle this type of hollow. That's a Mano's grande but why has it appeared, she said out loud getting Khan's attention, he looked to the sky to see what she was talking about only to be stalked by the size of the hollow. What is that thing sis, I've never heard of a hollow being that big, he said with his eyes still glued to it. While she explained to Khan what the type of hollow Mano's grande were, Ichigo and Uryu were trying to figure out what was going on. Ichigo and Uryu stared at the thing awed by the sheer size of the dark spirit, that does look like your even day garden variety hollow, Ichigo said with his eyes still glued on the Mano's grande. That little bit of bait I use couldn't have possibly drawn this, Uryu said in shock that the huge problem that stood before them now. Well whatever the reason for it, that doesn't change the fact that it's here, Ichigo replied as he turned his attention to the smaller hollows that decided they wanted to attack the two right then and there. Suddenly before the hollows could get to them, all of the hollows were systematically cut down by a teenage young woman who has holding a cannon that was wrapped in cloth over her shoulder. You should go now and focus on that big guy over there and well handle these small fly, Kazuki Urahara said appearing out of nowhere waving a fan around. Seeing Kazuki and his associates, a 17-year-old black-haired girl Ururu, a 14-year-old boy with red hair wielding a large cannibal and tessai were taking care of the hollows all around them. Ichigo and Uryu turned their attention to the Mainos trying to think of the best course of action to deal with it, that is until Ichigo just said to hell with planning and decided to charge in recklessly. Hey Ichigo wait don't just charge it head on, Uryu exclaimed seeing Ichigo do something stupid by charging the damn thing. Ichigo jumped at the Mainos with his sword drawn and made a slash at its leg only to get knocked to the ground. Rukia knowing that Ichigo was in over his head tried to help but she was stopped by Kazuki. Urahara let me go help Ichigo. You know he can't handle Mano's grande alone, she exclaimed only to have a binding spell cast on her courtesy of Kazuki. Relax there's a method to my madness, he told her with a grin on his face, she tried to break free from the spell but it was in vain. Just sit tight and watch the battle, it will prove interesting and besides, he has arrived, this news confused Rukia as she didn't know who he was talking about. That was when she felt an energy source appear close by turning to the source she was a blonde haired teen walk past them. The young man seemed to be radiating a mysterious power that she had never felt before, she continues to watch as he makes his way towards the Mano's grande. With Ichigo and Uryu, Uryu and Ichigo had to jump out of the way as the overgrown hollow's giant foot tried to crush them, Ichigo again charges in recklessly and slashes at its foot once again. This didn't even phase the Mano's grande as it tried to step on Ichigo again when he jumped back, Uryu tried shooting arrows at it as well but ultimately they didn't do any damage. Damn all of our attacks haven't even put a dent in this thing, Uryu thought, he then noticed that Ichigo retreating towards him. Ichigo we can't beat this hollow by attacking separately head on, Uryu said when Ichigo landed next to him, then how do you suppose we take this ugly bastard down, Ichigo asked as he waited for Uryu to answer. I have a theory but, it's not guaranteed to take this hollow down, Uryu told Ichigo. Well let's hear what you have in mind because it's better than nothing. Then they felt a huge energy signature appear behind them that they have never felt before. Why don't you two leave this one to me, Naruto said drawing the soul reaper and Quincy's attention, Ichigo and Uryu were confused by the sudden appearance of the blonde haired teen and the power he was emitting. Who is this guy the first didn't even sense him coming until he released that mysterious power, Uryu thought as he stared at the blonde that now stood in front of the Manos. We have already tried fighting it separately so, whatever you are planning might not work alone, Ichigo told Naruto as he let his Zanpakuto rest on his shoulder. Just stand and watch, I promise that you're in for a surprise, Naruto said in a lazy manner as he began walking towards the hollow, he then stops as the Mainos turns its attention away from Ichigo and Uryu knowing instinctively that Naruto was the biggest threat to its existence. It roars at Naruto then stomps on him trying to get rid of him quickly Ururu and Jinta who were not too far tried to shout at him to get out of there but then the Mano's foot hit the ground where he was and no human could survive being crushed. Suddenly demonic energy ripped through the sky knocking the Mano's grande to the ground shocking everyone who was watching the whole thing, the Mano's grande's howl ringing through the area as it fell. 
When they saw Naruto as the dust they saw that he was sporting extra appendages, fox ears on the top of his head and three fox tails. Rukia, Ichigo, Uryu, Jinta and Ururu were shocked at the power rolling off the blonde, it felt powerful and heavy to them and that it was wild and untamed. This power surprisingly didn't have an ominous feeling to it and so they were able to stay relaxed in its presence though the power itself well somewhat heavy and if they were a lot weaker they would on the ground. The Mainos using it hands was able to get back on its feet and lets out a hollow roar, angry that it had been knocked to the ground by someone that didn't even come past its feet. The Mainos started to gather energy for Asero hoping to wipe out the person that had gotten in its way. Asero, that Mainos is about to release a doom blast right here, Rukia said from her spot on the ground behind Kazuki, Ichigo and Uryu were about to go assist Naruto but they were stopped by a barrier that surrounded the area. What? Where the hell did this barrier come from? Ichigo said as he tried to cut into it but only for his blade to bounce off the barrier. Ichigo he's keeping us out of his way so we are not caught in the crossfire, for now we just have to watch, Uryu told Ichigo who wasn't too fond of that plan at all. Damn it this guy is gonna get himself killed if we don't get in there, Ichigo exclaimed in frustration feeling useless right at that moment. Relax Ichigo, that Mainos is no match for the man standing before you, Kazuki said as he along with Tessai and Rukia walked up to them. Ichigo turns to Kazuki with a surprised look on his face after hearing this. Mr. Hat and Clogs do you know this guy? Were you the one who sent him here to fight that hollow? Ichigo asked wondering if Kazuki planned for this to happen. Well I don't know him personally if that's what you're thinking but, the one person who sent him here has been one of my best customers this past year and told me that she would be sending someone here that matches his description, Kazuki said as he watched on with that lazy smile plastered on his face with the others following his example. Hearing this Ururu and Jinta who had also gathered around the others, watch this man closely not wanting to miss the action that was to come. Naruto who had stood there watching as the Mainos charge up all the energy it could for Asero that it hoped would obliterate him raised his left thumb to his mouth, using one of his sharp fangs he bit unto his thumb drawing blood. Naruto then pulled back his right sleeve exposing his right arm that was covered in seals, the onlookers that had seen him do this were confused on what he was doing and Ichigo was about to start banging on the barrier. This is until Naruto had swiped his thumb over the seal on his arm and a puff of smoke appeared. When the smoke vanished everyone even Kazuki were surprised to see a nodashi in Naruto's right hand, the blade was a beautiful silver that shine with the sun's reflection, the sword hilt was 30 centimeters in length. Naruto's sword is the same size as Kenpachi's blade but is not jagged but, shiny and smooth on the flat side. The guard was circular with a female wolf on both flat sides, the hilt was a lot like Tensa's on Jetsu's though instead of a black cloth wrapped around it, the cloth is silver and there is no chain at the bottom. Suddenly they felt the Maino's spirit energy spike and watched as it unleashed the Sero down upon Naruto. With both hand holding the elegant sword Naruto holds the sword over his head and waited for the blast to get close, the observers with the exclusion of Kazuki feeling the powers of the blast began shouting at Naruto to get out of the way and to run but, it was all for naught as Naruto had it all under control. When the Sero was 5 feet from the Naruto, he swings the sword and white energy explodes from the sword, shine brightly Kagaya. Naruto shouted as the white energy came into contact with the energy that flowed out of the sword. There was a bright flash of light that blinded the view of Naruto and the Maino's lower half were about 5 minutes. When the light finally died down there was Naruto standing there holding a new sword, the sword was double-edged dado and the blade and hilt wrap was alike blue in color with a blue snow crystal guard there was a crystallized chain at the end connected to a small blue diamond. The observers couldn't deny that the sword was beautiful and Rukia had to admit that it was equal to her blade in beauty and elegance. But when they saw the huge diamond shield that protected him it, made their eyes almost popped out of their heads, the Mainos Grande seeing that it was unable to kill the blonde began its retreat not wanting to get killed by this man. I don't believe it, he was able to make a Mainos retreat and survived a Sarah without sustaining injury, Rukia said aloud get a nod from the others. What's with that sword of his, how did he get a Zanpakuto and how did it transform into that blue dado, Ichigo asked Rukia and Kazuki with the others wanting to know the same thing. Well Ichigo Rukia will have to tell you later but, for now I think you should pay attention to that boy it would seem he isn't finished with that hollow, Kazuki said confusing the others. They all turned to see that Naruto was still standing in the same spot as before with the only that the shield was gone. Confused they all turned to the hollow only to be shocked when they saw the same blonde flying towards the Mainos with his right arm stretched out over his head and a ball red energy and four blades of wind swirling around it. Akuma Razen Shuriken, Naruto exclaimed as he let the attack fly at the Mainos Grande slamming into its mask and expanding outward. 
The hollow roared out as it destroyed, being ripped to shreds before it could vanish. The original Naruto grin at this and sheaths Kagaya in a sheath that he had on his back that appeared when the hollow was hit by the Rosin Shuriken. Letting down the barrier, Naruto made his way to his audience with a cold look adorning his face, when Naruto got close to them he studied their expression laughing on the inside at their slack-jawed looks and the lazy smile Kazuki wore on his face. Satisfied with their reactions Naruto takes a deep breath which get the others to hold in theirs subconsciously. He says so did you guys enjoy the show, with a fox-like grin on his face and his hand scratching the back of his head. This only seemed to everyone fall on their face with a sweat drop at his carefree attitude and Kazuki the start laughing. We find Ichigo and his group of spiritually aware friends along with Uryu all sitting in Urahara shop, Naruto at the request of Kazuki had also tagged along since he had to bring Naruto up to date with the current events in Karakura town. Ever since they had gotten to Urahara shop Uryu had tried to keep his distance from Naruto not wanting to be within three feet from the demon prince because of what happened before they left the clearing where Naruto destroyed the Mainos Grande. Flashback. Naruto analyzed everyone that had come to the clearing where Naruto had destroyed the Mainos, they interested the prince as he had not seen so many spiritually aware humans all located in one town before. What interested him the most is that while they all were staring at him with wanting to ask him questions, they were all giving each other the same looks along with the sense of familiarity they were sending one other. Well I have to say that this is an interesting group of people gathered before me, Naruto said as he lost the false grin that he wore and donned what he liked to call the Dark Prince look on his face. This look means that his eye narrowed in a menacing way but with lack the evil intent in them and a smirk that made Orihime, Tatsuki, Rukia and Ururu blush and look away. This action didn't go unnoticed by both Naruto and Kazuki and while the latter left the matter alone Naruto made a mental note to explore this later but for now he had something else he needed to clarify first. Can someone tell me why is it that so many of those things gathered around this small town? Naruto asked as he looked towards Ichigo and Uryu. Ichigo seemed on edge as there was something in Naruto's tone of voice that promised pain to those that committed a crime. Kazuki and everyone besides Uryu and Orihime sensed the impending doom in Naruto's words but they were too late as Uryu spoke up before they could warn him. I am the one who summoned all the hollows here, Uryu said as he pushed his glasses up on his face. Oh and may I ask the reason you would summon so many of those creatures in a town that is rich with spirit energy, Naruto asked his voice growing darker and his hair was covering his eyes. Then Uryu began to explain why he did what he did and was unaware that Naruto was slowly closing the distance between the two, Kazuki had a smirk on his face and tried to hide it with his fan. After Uryu finished his rant, he was decked in the face and sent five feet away. Ichigo winced after the hit as he watched it happen and had decided not to warn the young Quincy since he felt the boy had it coming. You fucking idiot. Just where you thinking gathering so many hollows in a town full of Ryatsu, Naruto growled at the Quincy annoyed by the boy's stupidity. Naruto then began to tear into the boy about the consequences of his actions. Everyone else could do nothing but watch as Naruto berated the boy for being stupid and almost getting hundreds of humans killed. End of flashback. Uryu kept his back turned to the group and Naruto as he nursed his broken nose with him sending glares towards Naruto every few seconds although he was ignored. Kazuki had brought Naruto up to date on what has been happening in Karakura town because of all the spirit energy within the city. Naruto then looks towards the group as he said, it's because of their lack of training that they draw the hollows here although Uryu can hide it well. The girls and Ichigo had the grace to look sheepish at what Naruto had said while Uryu felt some of his ego return. So um Uzumaki-san can I ask you something, Tatsuki asks wanting to get the prince to talk about himself. So you want to know what I am as my power is different from yours am I right, Naruto said as he turned his attention towards the group giving them an amused grin which made Tatsuki turn her head so he could not see the blush on her face. All right I suppose I can tell you what I am, Ururu, Jinta you two can join us Naruto said as the two teens walked in and sat down by the group. Okay now that everyone is here where should I start, Naruto says as he stood up to stretch. Hold on I have some tea that I have prepared for everyone, Tessai said as he sat the drinks on the table, Naruto took one of the teacups taking a sip. The group all took the tea that Tessai had offered them giving the man a thanks or a thank you which he replayed that they were welcome. After finishing his tea Naruto sighs out loud as he prepared to tell them a little about his race. Okay so you guys know now that there are soul reapers and creatures called hollows right, Naruto said speaking more to the girls that were new to the situation. When they all nodded including those that knew about them from the start. And you know that soul reapers live in what is known as heaven or the soul society as Kazuki calls it and hollows reside in a place called Hueko Mundo, he said getting more nods. 
Now can someone tell me what comes after those two places as there is one more place that I have yet to mention? If I am right then you would be referring to hell the place where souls that committed unforgivable crimes while they were alive get sent to when we soul reapers perform a conso, Rukia explained. That's right and as far as the soul society is concerned hell is just a nightmarish land that is governed by no one, just a place where those who are sent there suffer for all eternity, Naruto said with amusement lanced in his every word. So what are you trying to tell us that hell has its own population? Uryu asks Naruto, that it's not just places where the souls of the dawn descending to as punishment for their crimes as humans. So what you are saying is that you are a being that descend to hell and you are not just a spirit being, Orihime's summaries getting a nod from Naruto. What I am as a being humans refer to as a demon and unlike souls we are able to be seen by regular humans and we are alive, Naruto explains. Getting wide-eyed looks from the rest of the group except for Kazuki and Tessai who were already aware of this. What so everyone would be able to see you if you were fight in an overly populated area, Ichigo exclaimed not liking that possibility. When we appear our demonic energy is able to hide our physical body like and cloak making us invisible to them like spirits not even spiritually aware humans are able to see us, Naruto told them which put the others and Ichigo at ease. Well I think that's enough questions about me as I believe that it's time for you all to get home, Naruto said stopping them from asking any more questions. Kazuki watched as Naruto and the group all got up and began to head to the front door and he recalled what Amaterasu had told him about the young prince. Well he sure is an interesting one boss I wonder if he will help us in the near future, Tessai said to Kazuki as they watched them all leave with the other still trying to ask the prince questions about himself. Yes I believe so as we will need him for when the Soul Society sends those two for Rukia for the crime that she committed yes and from what Lady Amaterasu told us about him he want like that one bit because of the reason she did the acted, Kazuki said. Ururu and Jinta who had listened to what their boss had said wondered how Naruto would do against the Soul Society as they believed he was the only one out of the other that could stand toe to toe with a captain class. Streets of Karakura Town Naruto, Ichigo and the rest of their group were walking through the dark streets of Karakura after departing from Urahara shop. They had made small talk with each other and the girls had tried getting Naruto to tell them more about himself. Naruto then began to tease them asking if they had developed a crush on him to which they all began to blush and that made them stop asking for the time being. Well I guess this is where we part ways, Ichigo says as they all turn to each other. Well it was nice to meet you Uzumaki-kun I hope we see each other again soon by Rukia and Ichigo, Orihime said as she began walking home along with Tatsuki. See you at school Orihime and have a good night, Rukia said as she and Ichigo watch them leave. Make sure you two get home safely alright and you will see me again soon, Naruto said as Orihime and Tatsuki left after they both waved goodbye to them. Uryu had chosen this time to leave as well not wanting to be around the group any longer which Naruto and Ichigo noticed but decided to leave it alone. I guess I should go as well have a nice night Naruto said as he vanished shocking Ichigo and Rukia since they found that they could not sense his presence anymore. Elsewhere, Naruto appeared on a roof of a building on the other side of the town making sure the coast was clear he made a few hand signs and placed his hand on the ground. There was a puff of smoke and then an avenge size grey wolf appeared, the wolf gave out a lazy yawn as it looked up at Naruto obviously been asleep until it got summoned. What can do for you my young prince? the wolf demon said as it gave out another yawn. Jean it's good to see you again after three months how's your new baby doing these days, Naruto asked happy that he got to summon her. The little pups are doing great and even though they're already trying to explore and they miss you, she said as she laid on her belly. That's good ill have to go see them but I called you her to ask has Ami finished the preparations, Naruto asked her. Yes they had the mansion finished for you an hour ago and she left Tenko and Mizuki there, Jean told him which caused him to groan as he thought about Mizuki being there. Is there something wrong with those two being there Naruto, Jean asked since Naruto and Mizuki were the best of friends. I'd rather have Tomo there instead of Mizuki at least then I don't have to worry about my room becoming a death trap, Naruto complained. Well you know Mizuki is almost always with Tenko but I can ask her to babysit for me if you want, Jean suggested as she got ready to leave. Thanks that would be a blessing and tell Ami I said I can wait to see her again. Ill let Lady Amaterasu know as soon as I get to her office goodbye Naruto, and with that Jean disappeared back to Makai. Naruto takes a deep breath and sighs as he stretches his arms out loosing up his stiff muscles. I know you are there why don't you come out and tell me what you want, Naruto said as he turned around to look towards the dark corner of the roof. Small eyes opened up and there was a soft meow that seemed to come from them but Naruto knew that it wasn't a cat from its spiritual pressure in the red spirit ribbon. You can lose the disguise I know what you are soul reaper, 
Naruto said as he his black spirit ribbon appeared along with her red one. A chuckle escaped from the feline as it spoke in a deep man sounding voice, your quiet perceptive dark prince but do you think you can handle my true form, it can be quiet a shock, the black cat said as it started to walk out from the shadows. When the front half of its body came into view it began to change and grew, its hands paws became hands its hair grew long until it almost reached her behind and thanks to Naruto's enhanced eyesight in the moonlight he could tell that her hair was purple in color. Her body grew curves and her cat disguise became a one-piece suit that was sleeveless and legless, the brown-skinned goddess wore black fingerless teku that extend past her elbows and black stockings the exposed her feet. Her eyes were golden and she wore a seductive grin on her face, when she spoke her voice was softer and Naruto found that he was a little enchanted by the beautiful sound. Well is this form more to your liking? Does my hot young body excite you? Yoruichi Shihoin purred as she walked up to him and began to press her D-cup breast against Naruto's chest as she wrapped her arms around his neck. Naruto who had been shocked by the fact that the cat with a deep voice had become a beautiful young woman who was had her arms around his neck. Now his hormones were beginning to go into overdrive and he had to retrain himself from releasing them otherwise he would end up ravaging her right then and there. May I know the name of the death goddess that graces me with her presence? Naruto growled lustfully into her ear making her shiver in delight. My name is Yoruichi Shihoin former head of the Onmitsukido in the Soul Society and also former captain of the 2nd Division of the Gote 13, Yoruichi explained as she moved away from Naruto and placed her hand on her hip and flashed him a playful smile. It's a pleasure to meet you Yoruichi Shihoin now is there anything I can do you or did you just come to play, Naruto asked not really minding either way. Well I actually came because I've been watching you since that battle with the Mainos as you demonstrated great skill and power, Yoruichi praised him getting a small blush from the prince. Glad that I was able to impress you Yoruichiheim, Naruto said as he gave a bow getting a giggle from the goddess. Well I am so impressed that, Yoruichi then uses flash step to appear behind Naruto and she stole his headband surprising the prince as he had let his guard down around the woman. I want to test your speed so let's play a game of tag, Yoruichi said as she kissed the metal plate on Naruto's headband. Naruto shook his head and jumped towards her but she used flash step again to appear on the other side of the roof. I see so your speed is the thing that you use the most in battle and I bet that if you wanted to silent kills would be child's play for you, Naruto said as he analyzed the woman. Good observation now here are the rules, you have until the sun goes up to catch me and take this from me, she said waving his headband around in the air. Okay that's acceptable anything else that you want to add. Naruto asked the Flash Goddess glad that he could test his speed against someone like her. If you manage to take this I will do two things for you but if you should lose I get to keep this and you will be my slave for the two weeks is that alright with you, Yoruichi purred as she flashed a sexy grin at Naruto. Alright I accept, and with that Naruto appeared behind her in a red flash almost catching her but she used flash step to escape and made her way through the city at inhuman speeds. Naruto smirked as he sped after her enjoying the chance to cut loose and have fun with the dark-skinned goddess. Naruto lay on the soft grass panting close to a riverbank in Karakura town, he had spent all night chasing Yoruichi Shihoin who was currently on the grass right by him feeling exhausted as well. The sun had just began to raise into the sky when Naruto had finally caught Yoruichi. Well you sure are faster than I had first thought you would be, it seems you won, Yoruichi said between her soft gasps for air. Don I knew I was out of shape as soon as those few dozen flash steps and I am dead tired Yoruichi mentally groaned. I might have won but I could tell that you weren't using going as fast as you could have been so I know I need to get back to work on my speed, Naruto said as he had finally gotten his breathing under control. Hear this from the prince made her giggle at the fact that he seemed to lack any arrogance in his personality. You interest me Naruto Namikaze, to think that you would have noticed that I wasn't going as fast as I could have been the flash goddess said as she sat up and began to stretch her arms. Naruto's eyes were glued to this chocolate skin goddess beside him, watching as she arched her back thrusting her d-cup breast out, Yoruichi noticing this gave the blonde haired prince a mischievous grin. Naruto seeing this grin back, he then began to stand up, and offered his hand in order to help Yoruichi up which she gracefully accepted. Well you did win so you get to prizes from me, she said as she crossed her arms under her chest. Yes I believe you are right now to think about what I want, Naruto said as he began to think turn toward the river and closing his eyes a thoughtful expression on his face. After about three minutes, Naruto turned back to her in order to tell her what he wanted. I finally thought of something how abo, whatever Naruto would about to say died on his lips when Yoruichi claimed his lips in a heated a passionate kiss. 
Naruto stiffed shocked that she had kissed him but after about 20 seconds he relaxed and began to kiss her back. As they separated, Yoruichi gave Naruto an amused grin as he touched his lips. Well I think that is as good a prize as any, am I right Naruto, Yoruichi said as she licked her lips. All Naruto could do was nod, well I'd stick around a little more but I have thing that need to be taken care of, so how about I save your second request for the next time we meet, Yoruichi she as she turned to leave. Snapping out of his daze Naruto smiled, yeah that's fine as I have somewhere to be as well, Naruto said as he began to think about the place that Amaterasu had set up for him. Naruto watches Yoruichi left him by the river, he grinned to himself as he disappeared. Elsewhere, the demon queen Amaterasu sat in her new office thinking about the object of her affection, it had been one year since she had been reborn and had taken the boy from his world and their relationship had seemed to grow stronger with each day. Oh Naruto where are you now it's already morning and you weren't in bed when I came to the mansion, she thought feeling depressed that she couldn't wake him up in the morning like she used to while he trained under her. Her thoughts the turn to what she heard happened when the hollows began appearing in the town the day before. Kazuki had informed her that Naruto had destroyed the Mainos Grande that had appeared with ease, which filled her with pride. What had her worried though was that she knew that old fart would no doubt hear about this and send someone to investigate. Well I hope he will be ready as I don't know how strong the captains of the Soul Society will be and Kazuki won't tell men if I ask his father to make the boy tell me, she thought as she sighed in annoyance. Amaterasu mood seemed to brighten when she had heard a knock on her door hoping that Naruto had arrived, my lady it's me may I come in, said a woman from the other side of the door. Hearing the voice and knowing whom it belonged to Amaterasu's mood darkened, as it was not Naruto. You may enter. She said the sound of her voice I emphasizing how upset she was now, the door opened and a beautiful young woman walked into the room. She has long blue hair, fox ears and green eyes, she wore a maid outfit with black stockings, she had a small blush and smile on her face. She was a three-tailed fox and let them sway as she walked, sorry to disturb you but the young lord is finally here and he is waiting to see you at the table, she said as she bowed to the goddess. Amaterasu's bad mood seemed to vanish as she stood up and looked at the blue-haired Kitsune. He's finally here that's great news, tell him he'll be down shortly, she told Mizuki who nodded and left to tell the prince. Amaterasu had a smile on her beautiful face as she stood up and began to head out the door as she and Naruto had some things they needed to discuss. Downstairs in the kitchen. After Mizuki had told the Naruto that Ami would see him shortly, he decided that he had better get something to eat. By the time Naruto had gotten to the mansion it was around lunch and he knew that the girls would be hungry especially Tenko who was probably taking a nap. Walking into the kitchen, Naruto see that no one was there he began to open the refrigerator and began to cook. Naruto had decided to make himself some ramen, some rice balls and curry with rice, thanks to Tenko Naruto learned how to cook western style food and cooked it one day a week. Naruto had then set three extra plates of food on the table and stood behind the chair at the head of the table as he waited for the smell to hit the girls' sensitive noses. Naruto did not have to wait long as Amaterasu and Mizuki both came to the kitchen along with two other girls. Am I smell food, Tenko said as she yawned and rubbed her eyes, Tenko was a nine-tails kitsune who was Naruto's bodyguard and had admired her since Tenko was a child years before Ami disappeared. Tenko was a very adorable kitsune with five tails on her head for hair and four tails behind her, she had cute face, emerald eyes with slits pupils. She was five foot seven and her bust was a C cup, Naruto had to hide his blush as she was only wearing an oversized shirt and some white panties and socks. Oh hey oh Naruto tan food smells great, was Tenko's half happy, half sleepy reply as she sat in the chair on his right, she also had a small crush on him. Good morning Naruto sama how was your night? Mizuki said in a somewhat bitter tone as she bowed to him, Naruto and Mizuki had a strained relationship as Naruto because of her crush on Ami. Naruto had tried many times to fix this, as he didn't want the girl to hate him because of the fact that Ami always pays him the most attention. She still hates me because of Ami's sigh this is such a drag, Ami of course knew this but she left it alone, as the girl would have to get over it, as she was Ami's personal guard. Good morning girls I hope you had a good night's sleep he asked the two to which he got a yes from both of them. Turning to his mistress, Naruto held both of her hands as he gave her a chaste kiss on the lips. Sorry I am late Ami-chan but I had been chasing a black cat who stole my headband and it took longer than I expected to catch her, Naruto said in a way that reminded him of Kakashi. This statement seemed to confuse Tenko, as she knew no normal animal could outrun the prince, 
as he was the fastest ninjas alive, Mizuki though seemed annoyed by this, as she did not tolerate excuses. Ami though giggled as she had guessed it was a woman he had been chasing after he said catch here. Well then next time you should nt underestimate your opponents just because you were one of the fastest, she joked with him shocking Mizuki and getting a chuckle from Naruto as he sat down to her left. Mizuki sat down by Tenko and began eating her food ignoring Naruto, which made him sigh in annoyance, feeling the tension in the air Ami decided that it was time to change the subject. Naruto there's something important that we need to talk about as it happened last night while you wear out, she said all signs of playfulness gone. Naruto seeing this grew serious as well as he felt that whatever it was he was not going to like it. What's the problem Amaterasu as I can tell that you have been stressed because of this, Naruto said as he ate some of his ramen, Tenko who had started eating when Mizuki started was paying close attention, wanting to know as well. Mizuki who already knew this continued to eat her food while sending glare at Naruto. It'll get straight to the point about the time that Jean had told me that she had talked to you a soul reaper had entered hell and along with a small army of hollows and helped free Madara form hell, Ami explained to her young prince. Hearing this made Naruto choke on his ramen, as this was something that he dreaded happening, getting his coughing under control much to Mizuki's disgust Naruto look at his queen in with anger shining in his eye. Can you give me all the details and did someone happen to get the reaper's name, the prince asked as a million thoughts ran through his head. Feeling his anger and knowing that he wanted to go and kill Madara and the man that freed him, he knew that it would be best to give him all the details. From what the survivors had told use a man with brown hair, wore glasses and wearing the standard uniform with a captain's howry, Mizuki said deciding to join the conversation. Have you informed Kazuki about this because I am sure he would have an idea on the identity of the captain, Naruto stated to which they shook their heads. I wanted you to inform him after you learned of this and there are still some things that we need research about this so-called captain, Amaterasu said getting a nod from Naruto. Well I am feeling exhausted so I am going to take a nap, Ami-chan, you'll be sleeping in your room right, Naruto asked her, which she answered to with a nod. Two days later, hi Rukia how are you, Orihime said walking up to the soul reaper, Rukia had been deep in thought over what accord had a week ago during that hollow incident. She was so deep in thought that she had found herself surprised when Orihime Haid called out her name. Oh, um hey there Orihime I am doing fine, was her reply, is it alright if I walk to school with you, the orange haired girl asked. Of course you can, I didn't know that you were an early riser like me do you always come to school this early, Rukia said trying to push all of her thoughts to the back of her mind. No I am usually late but with summer almost her I am so excited that I can't sleep and every morning I pop out a bad all sparkly. Yay, or he may explain in an overly happy voice. Rukia felt a little awkward only answered her with a less than enthusiastic right as she watched the girl. Summer is the best season isn't it, what are you going to do for the rest of your summer vacation? She asked. Um, well I have no idea, Rukia said, well there's a fireworks festival coming up in August in Tatsuki and a bunch of us are going, you should come along with us Rukia so what do you say? The two girls continued to make small talk as they made their way towards the school they even talk about finding Naruto, Ichigo, and asking them to attend the festival with them. Sometime later, Ichigo watches Orihime, Tatsuki, Ururu and some of the other girls in his class play during their physical ed class, as he wondered why they were messing around after Orihime used a baseball bat to hit a home run with a soccer ball, a boy named Keigo Asano pounced on him. Yo Ichigo checking out the girls huh, it was more of a statement than a question. Ichigo tried to pry him of his back but Keigo hold on to him like a monkey on a tree. Oh I see, checking out Orihime, she's quite the boobalicious babe, Keigo said with an overly perverted look on his face. Ichigo finally loosing his temper knocks Keigo off his back into the ground, hey I thought I told you to never do that, Ichigo exclaimed which seemed to make Keigo get to his feet faster than normal. Keigo then ranted on about how it was perfectly normal for teenage boys to be obsessed with hot cuties and Ichigo admitting that there was nothing word with it. Then a boy named Mizuhiro Kojima tossed a soccer ball that hit Keigo in the head, Mizuhiro then yelled at Keigo to quiet messing around and help him put all of the balls and equipment away. During their next class, Oryu finally arrived at class with both of his arms wrapped in bandages. He had obviously been training hard since that incident, oh my god Oryu what happened? the teacher Misato Ochi asked in shock at the boy's injuries. I had just fall down some starts, Oryu explained as he adjusted his glasses. Comma, the reaction of the class was priceless. 
Misato just told him to go to his seat and open his textbook so she could get back to teaching the class. Ururu had watched him go to his seat but then she turned back to the front of the class, as this didn't interest her. Ichigo did as well until Rukia commented on it, then he just turned to look out the window. While the other students began to gossip about Arias injuries Ururu, Orihime, Tatsuki, and Chad all had their minds on Naruto. The demonic enigma had been on their minds for the past two days as they wonder where he had disappeared and when he would return. After class Ichigo invited Ariyu to have lunch with him, Chad, Keigo, Mizuiro and Jinta who only got to hang out with them during lunch because he had a different class schedule. During lunch, Rukia was sitting in tree thinking about that time a member of the stealth force had come to Karakura. I've been under suspicion from the very beginning, it won't be much longer until they come for me, she mumbled to herself. There she is, hey Rukia came the voices of her female classmates, turning around she saw Orihime along with Tatsuki, Ururu, Mahana, Ryo, Chizoru, and Michiru getting ready to have their lunch under the tree she was sitting on. You should come down and eat lunch with us, Mahana said to which Rukia agreed. As the girls talked, Orihime pulled out something that she made for her lunch that made all of the other girls besides Ururu and Rukia cringe in disgust. Then Mahana turned to Rukia and asked her if she had any feelings for Ichigo was making her perform a spit take and then look at Mahana. This seemed to gain everyone's attention, as they wanted to know as well. Well Ichigo is just a friend, Rukia explained as she wiped her mouth with a handkerchief, the other girls began talking about other things about Ichigo with Orihime getting into it too. However, as they talked Orihime, Tatsuki, and Ururu minds kept thinking about Naruto. Next, the girl Mahana asks Ururu what she thought of Ichigo, come on Ururu tell us what you think about Ichigo, Mahana said. Oh I am not all that interested in Ichigo as he's not my type, Ururu said as she drank her juice. Orihime hearing this ask her something that made Ururu, Tatsuki and Rukia jump, is the reason you're not interested in because Naruto is the boy you like. Naruto, who's that, was the thought that ran through the other girl's thoughts at the same time. Notice the confused looks on the other girls face Tatsuki, Ururu, Orihime and Rukia told them the edit version about how they met Naruto. After school, Ichigo was just leaving the school when Rukia had called out to him sounding as if she was in a hurry. Rukia what's the matter is it another hollow? The orange haired teen asked. No it's not that, Rukia said as she held her head down thinking about all the trouble she had caused the boy. Ichigo are you feeling okay? She asked him after a minute of silence. Hum, oh yeah I am feeling great but why are you asking, Ichigo was confused as she had been acting weirder than usual lately. Oh it's no reason I am just glad you're okay, is there going to be another one like yesterday, he asked his soul reaper companion. If a Mano's grande started appearing every day day then we'd be in trouble, she said jokingly. Rukia you know that you're uh, acting a bit strange today Ichigo commented. Did something that could get us in a lot of trouble happen, he acted referring to the soul society. Before Rukia took answer, his question they heard someone cry out for help. Moving from the front of the school, they turned to where they heard the scream only to see a loin-stuffed animal running towards them. Ichigo forgive me I should have never run away, I realized now that my place is with you and I promise to never do it again, the mod soul known as Khan proclaimed as he had jumped up and latched himself to Rukia's chest. After leaving the school and having a Ryu, after insulting his skills fixed Khan up they all went back to Ichigo's place. Later that night as Ichigo went to the kitchen to eat his food with his sisters, Father Rukia left Ichigo a goodbye letter, and she escaped out his window. Look at the Kurosaki clinic one last time she ran off into the night hoping that when Ichigo read the letter she would be long gone. Ichigo was washing his hands in his personal bathroom after he had finished using with his family. As usual, the substitute Soul Reaper was in a bad mood because of his father Ishin's random and irritating sneak attacks that, he does every time Ichigo lets his guard down. Of course, Ichigo is easily able to shrug off these attacks and kick the shit out of the man, the whole situation however, still annoys Ichigo. That old man take tough love to a whole new level doesn't he realize what time it is, Ichigo grumbled to himself as he turns the water off, man I wonder where Rukia ran off to this late at night, it is already 2 in the morning and she's not back yet, Ichigo says to himself. Oh well, at least I can get a break from the Soul Reaper business tonight, Ichigo then turns off the water and grabs a dry towel he keeps on his towel rack. As the dries his hands and goes to open the door, Ichigo hears a muffled voice that startled the substitute Soul Reaper. Ah what the hell was that noise just now, 
Ichigo says as he looks around the bathroom, Ichigo hears the sound again and realizes that it was coming from behind the toilet. Looking there, he was surprised to find Khan taped to the back of the toilet. Khan what are you doing back there? Ichigo asked as he helped free the mod soul. Thanks all right Ichigo, you really saved my ass, Khan says as they sat in the substitute's room. Ichigo then proceeds to ask Khan how he ended up in that situation, to which he explained was Rukia's doing and said that she had run away. Khan then notices that Rukia left a farewell note that she wrote in her own special way that said her had to leave and he should stay hidden. After reading, the letter Ichigo decided that to go after the runaway and then Kazuki showed up to help Ichigo transform into a soul reaper. End of flashback, just wait for me Rukia, I am coming for you Ichigo thought as he continued to move through the city. Elsewhere, so you let him go face those two powerful soul reapers alone to hopefully teach him a lesson, am I right Urahara? Naruto said as they stood on top of one of the telephone wires overlooking the city. This is something that Ichigo has to learn from experience in order to grow stronger, Kazuki told the demon prince who just sighed. Yes I suppose, he's like I was in that aspect just ready to dive in head first without any thought or planning said. So Naruto what do you plan on doing, will you save him or will you let them to beat him within an inch of his life, Kazuki asked as he turned to leave. It doesn't matter to me as long as he lives, although I should let Ichigo have that near-death experience, Naruto said as he began to head towards where Ichigo, Rukia, Oryu and the two powerful reapers. However, there is one with a vast amount of spirit energy there that I was told belonged to a captain, Naruto said as he vanishes by morphing into a red and black ball of demonic energy. Kazuki grinned to himself as he to vanished using flash step, heading back to Urahara shop. With Rukia, Rukia felt hopelessly as she watches, Oryu get struck down by the lieutenant class reaper that had come to take her to the soul society. When she had left Ichigo and run through the empty streets, only for the reaper to run into the two she had not been expecting to come to the world of the living. These two were the captain and lieutenant of squad 6, Yukuya Kuchiki and Renji Aburai, Yukuya was the man who adopted her into the Kuchiki family and Renji was the boy she grew up with in Rukan district. Well kid it seems that you were all talk and no action. Now then let's finish this shall we, Renji says as he raises his sword to kill Oryu, however, before the final blow was give a shock wave of spirit energy cut through the ground between Renji and Oryu saving the Quincy's life. Renji had jumped away from the attack to get some distance between him and the person who attacked him. Who the hell are you, Renji asked as he turned to his attacker, the name is Ichigo and I am the man who is going to beat your ass, how's it going? Rukia held the most shock out of everyone at seeing Ichigo here. Wearing a Shihakusho, I don't know what squad are you from and what's with that oversized Zanpakuto, Renji asks Ichigo. You saying that I've got a big one huh, it's funny to tell you the truth I've been thinking that it looked kinda big when compared to Rukia's, Ichigo told the lieutenant. The size of one's sword reflex is their spirit energy, so how did a snot nose Brad get a sword that big, Renji said to himself. Rukia though was not happy to see Ichigo here, as she knew that he could not win against these two. Ah you must be the human that Rukia gave her powers to, Renji states as he jumps towards the substitute reaper. Renji then attacks Ichigo who blocks his sword strikes, Ichigo then forces Renji to jump into the air when he tried to cut Renji in half. Renji then drops his spiritual pressure down on Ichigo stunning the team, which gave him an opportunity to injure his shoulder by cutting through it. Renji then told Ichigo how he would die here and how Rukia would then go to the soul society to die. He told Ichigo that he should have stayed at home and the fact that Rukia came out on her own so that he would not have to get involved, Renji then told him that there was no way that Ichigo could hurt a real soul reaper. Ichigo then took advantage of Renji letting his guard down, managing to cut his chin. You let your guard down Renji, Yukuya says getting everyone attention, this young man Ichigo Kurosaki, I believe I've seen him before. There was a report from the Anmitsukido that he was one of the people who had destroyed an army of hollows single-handedly before Amenos Grande appeared in the human world, the captain of Squad 6 explained. Renji however, just laughed in amusement unimpressed by this information, so what if he had destroyed an army of low-class hollows, that's something, any competent reaper can do, Renji, says pissing off Ichigo. Besides look at him and that Zanpakuto, it's just an overgrown piece of junk, Renji proclaims in disgust. It's obvious he can't control his spirit energy, so what's the name of that monstrosity, Renji asks confusing Ichigo. You haven't even asked did you, Renji states confusing Ichigo even more, Rukia knew at that moment that she had missed up big time and knew what Renji was about to do. 
So you were telling me that you all name your sword, Ichigo asked Renji who just wanted to sigh in annoyance at that moment. I knew it, you're not even able to ask your Zanpakuto its name and you really thought you could fight me as an equal, Renji says as he raises his sword. Roar Zabameru, Renji exclaims as his sword transforms into a six-part segmented blade with each segment that is wider than the one preceding it from the hilt. Zabameru no open your eyes, see what lies before you, as Renji says this he jumps into the air above a shocked Ichigo. Renji then swings down with the sword hoping to cut clean through Ichigo who had no time to block, however, Zabameru never made contact with Ichigo and had been stopped by a crystal shield. Now it was Bukuya's turn to be shocked, he was expecting Renji's blade to cut into the substitute Soul Reaper and he had not noticed the person who saved Ichigo arrive. Ichigo and Rukia both looked surprised as well as they noticed the shield that appeared, but they both instantly knew who had saved the substitute. Renji however, was growing more angrier as people keep showing up to delay his mission when all he wanted to do was get this over with so he could get back to the Soul Society. I believe that I've seen enough, Naruto said as everyone turned to look at him, and just who are you supposed to be, Renji asks Naruto who moved to stand beside Ichigo. Naruto Namikaze, it's a pleasure to meet you Soul Reaper, Naruto states as he rests Kagaya's blade on his shoulder. I see you have a Zanpakuto has well however, I can tell you're not a Reaper, Renji states as he analyses the demon. You're right I am not a Soul Reaper, Naruto says as he turns his attention to Bukuya and then to Rukia and the injured Uryu who was on the ground. Naruto thanks for the help but, I've got this, Ichigo says as he takes a step forward. I am afraid that's not possible, Naruto says in a monotone voice, this seemed to confuse Ichigo, who turned to look at Naruto. Suddenly Naruto turns towards Ichigo and stabs two sanban sized chakra rods into Ichigo neck, shocking everyone in the clearing. What the hell didn't he come to save this kid, why would he attack him, Renji thought as the watch Ichigo dropped to the ground face front with the needle sticking out the side of his neck. Rukia had gone turned a ghostly pale at seeing Ichigo lay lifeless on the ground with his eyes wide open in shock, she then drops down to her knees as tears fall from her eyes. Ichigo she calls out to the boy only to get no reply from the boy, Renji looks to her and then back to Naruto, still not sure about what he had just seen. As she stared at Ichigo's lifeless body, images of a man that looked like Ichigo with black hair flashed through her mind as her tear kept on flowing. Ichigo Rukia cries out into the night, this seemed to disturb both Renji and Yukuya while Naruto was unaffected by this for reason they did not know. Suddenly Naruto holds Kagai out before him and the blade begins to glow grounding everyone besides Rukia's attention. Kagai awaken, Naruto says as his sword transform into a beautiful woman, the woman had snow white hair that went all the way down to mid back. Her eyes were sapphire blue and she had to white wolf hers on top of her head, Kagai wore a light blue kimono with light blue obi that had a snow design on it, finally, like all demons she had tails, which were also white. How may I serve you master? Kagaya asked, her voice soothing to everyone who heard it. I would like you to take Ichigo's body here and Ryu to Kazuki's shop, Naruto commanded still using his emotionless voice, which seemed to grab Rukia's attention. Get away from him, Rukia exclaims as she stood up and ran towards Kagaya as she was lifting his body off the ground. Hold on, Rukia stop, Renji says as he grabs her and keeps her away from Naruto and the woman. Let me go Renji I have to go to him. Rukia says as she tried to fight him off her while crying her eyes out, Yukuya turned away from them in order to watch the woman grab an unconscious Uryu. Why does it matter now you fool, the kid is dead, Renji says as he allows let's go of her when she stopped struggling. Naruto Namikaze, I want to know what you plan to do with those two, Yukuya asks gaining everyone's attention. Why should it matter to you what I do with the body, Naruto asks the soul reaper getting shocked looks from both Rukia and Renji. What if I plan to eat him, Naruto says as both Bukuya and Renji notices that had four red tails with white tips. When Rukia heard, Naruto say that, she had a horrified look on her face as she ran at Kagaya hoping to take Ichigo's body away from the woman. However, before she could get to the woman Naruto had grabbed her by the throat and lifted her up into the air, Renji seeing this went to attack the demon prince only for one of his tails to smack Renji sending him flying past Bukuya. Rukia began to try to claw her way out of Naruto's grasp but it seemed to be useless. How about I make your job more by putting her asleep, Naruto says as Bukuya who then places his hand on his sword, Kagaya had chosen this time to disappear. I have no intention of killing her just put her asleep, Naruto says as he activates his jagan eye. 
Sukuyomi Naruto says in his head. Three seconds later Rukia stopped struggling, and Naruto gently laid her on the ground. Now that that's over, you can take her and leave the human world, Naruto says as he steps away from the girl's body. Now I remember who you are, Yukuya says confused Renji who had gotten back to his feet and stood beside his captain. Naruto Namikaze the one that was reported to have killed the Mainos Grande that appeared in the world of the living, he explains getting an evil grin from Naruto who allowed his demon pressure to drop down on them. To Renji it was almost as if he was staring at Kenpachi Zaraki without his eye patch sealing his power. Yukuya knew immediately that it was time to leave and not provoke this man, knowing that if they tried to fight they would die before they could even get the Soul Society to lift the limiters. Renji, we are leaving, we are leaving Yukuya tells him as he picks up Rukia, Renji snapped out of it and looked about ready to argue only for Yukuya to give him a look that said not to. Therefore, after opening a Senkaimon with that they went back to the Soul Society leaving Naruto there in the clearing. Naruto sighs in annoyance, as he knew that he had to go to Urahara's to see Ichigo. Oh well let's get this over with so I can go home and then get to Ami, Naruto says to himself as he turns back into a ball of energy and flies off to towards Urahara shop. Urahara shop, where am I? Ichigo mumbles as he opens his eyes only to see Tessai right in his face, seeing this Ichigo did what anyone in his situation would have. Ah, he screamed, hey boss Ichigo is awake, Tessai says while Ichigo tries to get Tessai off him. After finally getting the weirdo off him, he notices that he was at Urahara's shop. Ichigo you need to calm down, Kazuki says as he talked into the room, you know you're really lucky that Naruto was able to save you before they could kill you, Kazuki told Ichigo. Wait why did he stop me, I could have however, before he could finish what he said Kazuki knocked him on his back. And what exactly could you have done against those two, don't act so dumb, Kazuki told the boy. Because of the fact that you were in a death-like state and the Rukia has gone back to the Soul Society, you have lost your Soul Reaper powers, Kazuki told him shocking Ichigo. You think you can beat them don't make me laugh, as you are know there is nothing that you could do in the Soul Society. Right know you're weak and any time a weak person enters the enemy's den, it's basically suicide, as Kazuki tells Ichigo this, Naruto who was carrying Yorichi in her cat form walks into the room. He's right you know, you need to regain your soul reaper powers and soul society has a one month waiting period before they decide to execution someone so, let's hope that's the case with Rukia, the demon prince says getting Ichigo's attention. You will have 10 days to train and then 7 to open the gate to the soul society, Kazuki explains to the team. Then we'll have 13 days to go save Rukia which means we have lots of time, Naruto finished explaining. Ichigo thought about Rukia as he held his head down, will I become strong enough in 10 days, Ichigo asks Urahara who says yes. So long as you truly wish to save Rukia, from the bottom of your heart, Kazuki tells him. After thinking about it, some more Ichigo finally agrees to the training and is more determined to save the woman he owed his life to. Well it seems he has made his decision now, I wonder what the others will decide to do, Yoruichi says as Naruto who was still carrying her left Urahara shop. You plan to train them if they decide to go Yoruichi chan Naruto asked the black cat who began to rub her head against Naruto's chest. I see well for now let's get to the mansion, I am ready to get some sleep, and with that Naruto along with Yoruichi vanished heading towards Amaterasu's mansion. Then we'll have 13 days to go save Rukia, which means we have lots of time, Naruto finished explaining. Ichigo thought about Rukia as he held his head down, will I become strong enough in 10 days, Ichigo asks Urahara who says yes. So long as you truly wish to save Rukia, from the bottom of your heart, Kazuki tells him. After thinking about it, some more Ichigo finally agrees to the training and is more determined to save the woman he owed his life to. Well it seems he has made his decision now, I wonder what the others will decide to do, Yoruichi says as Naruto who was still carrying her left Urahara shop. You plan to train them if they decide to go Yorichi chan Naruto asked the black cat who began to rub her head against Naruto's chest. I see well for now let's get to the mansion, I am ready to get some sleep, and with that Naruto along with Yorichi vanished heading towards Amaterasu's mansion. Where is Rukia? The training begins Rukia awakens only to find that she was in the cell, at first, she was confused wondering how she had gotten there until her memory started to come back and tears began to run down her eyes. She sighs as she used the sleeves of her white kimono to dry her eyes, as she did this she thought about what Naruto had told her right before her world became dark. 
Naruto after having supposedly killing Ichigo right before her eyes, he had taken her into the crimson world of the Tsukuyomi. Flashback. Naruto drops Rukia to the ground of the Red Illusion world and then stared at her as she cried her eyes out and yelled at him, Calm down woman there is something I need you to do for me, Naruto tells her as he sits on a throne that appeared right behind him. Rukia glares at the prince as she stands up clenching her fists as a little of her spiritual energy began to leak out, You, how dare you ask me to help you after what you have done, Rukia says as her energy started to build up. You killed Ichigo, Rukia exclaims as her power increased. Naruto just sighed, as he knew this would happen so he raised his yokai forcing Rukia to the ground, good now that I have your attention, I would like to inform you that Ichigo is still alive, Naruto tells her. To say she was stunned was an understatement however, she gave Naruto a look that told him that she didn't believe him, how can you say that to my face when I stood there and watched the whole thing, Rukia says. Then her own words seemed to finally, sink in as she once again began to cry, suddenly it dawned on Naruto why she was feeling much worse than she should have. Rukia must have done something that caused someone close to her to be killed and she has not forgiven herself for it. Rukia listen Ichigo is still alive. I have placed Ichigo in a near death state to give the appearance that he's dead, he tells her as he squats down and places his hand on her shoulder. Rukia looks into Naruto's deep blue eyes with her now red puffy ones, Rukia gasped as she stared into those blue orbs, Naruto's eyes seemed too radiant with compassion, kindness and just looking into those eyes made her want believe him. To prove it to you why don't I show you just how I put him in this state without killing him, Naruto tells her as the scene around changed to what had happened before Naruto placed her in the genjutsu. It showed Naruto attacking Ichigo with the senbon needles, Naruto then poked her on the forehead transferring information about the way he used the senbon on. After that, Naruto had told her that in one week's time he along with Ichigo and the others would come for her. She tried to protest to only for Naruto to poke her in the forehead and told her not to worry about it, as there was something more important that he need her to know as their time was almost up. There is a traitor within the Soul Society, a man with brown hair, wearing a captain's haori and glasses, Naruto told her before they left the illusion world. I know someone who matches that description however, for it to be him of all people, Rukia thought, suddenly a sword appeared on her lap snapping her out of her thoughts. So you finally decide to appear before me Soda-chan, Rukia says as she hugs the sheath sword to her chest. The sword then began to pulsate, and then it changed into a pale white katana with a white hollow snowflake like Suba and a white ribbon attached to the pommel. Then a beautiful young Yuki Ona behind Rukia with her arms wrapped the reaper's waist, the woman's skin was as white along with her hair and kimono in a large purple bow. She wore a pale yellow obi as well, her eyes are dark blue, which seemed to complement her pale appearance making her easily one of the most enchantingly beautiful women anyone had the pleasure of seeing. This was Rukia's Zanpakudo spirit and the most beautiful sword and spirit in the Soul Society, Soda no Shirayuki. As she held her mistress, she mutters the name of the man who has gotten her attention, Naruto Uzumaki, every interesting. Karakura Town. Ichigo sighs he thought about the incident with the two Soul Reapers, after Rukia was taken back to the Soul Society, everything had gone back to the way it was before she had appeared at least at home and at school. What made it even worse was that Uryu and Ururu had not come to school that day, although he knew why Ururu had not come. It felt weird to him for Rukia not to be there by his side and know he was wondering what he should do now as he had so free time before his training began. As he was leaving the school campus Orihime, Tatsuki, both called out to him getting his attention, Orihime and Tatsuki had run in order to catch up to Ichigo before he had left school. Hey Orihime, Tatsuki is there something wrong, he asked the two as he noticed the looks they were giving him. Ichigo where is Rukia, Orihime asks him getting a shocked look from the ex-reaper, tell us why, has everyone seemed to have forgotten about her like she never existed, Tatsuki added. Ichigo getting over the shock motioned for the two of them to follow him so they could talk in private. After walking for about 15 minutes, they were able to find a place where they could discuss the matter about Rukia in private. As they sat on some steps, Ichigo began to explain what had happened the last night with Rukia and the two reapers Bukuya and Renji. To say they were surprised would be like saying Naruto loved to eat more than one bowl of ramen per day, they were a little alarmed when Ichigo explained Naruto's part in the incident however, they knew he had a good reason. I see so, you're going to attempt to rescue her, well then count me in as well, Tatsuki said as getting bewildered looks from both Ichigo and Orihime. Wait what do mean, you know this is not like those tournaments you love to enter, they may even be as strong as Naruto, Ichigo tells the two girls. Tatsuki clenched her fists and teeth and Orihime seemed conflicted, so what at all the more reason, 
Tatsuki says getting Ichigo and Orihime's attention. It's all the more reason for us to use the time we have to train and become more powerful than they are am I right? Tatsuki proclaimed with a grin on her face. Orihime and Ichigo both smiled, as they had to agree with her, well said Tatsuki-chan. Naruto says as he descends from the roof of a nearby house, Oh hello Naruto-chan where you looking for us? Orihime asked as she stood up and moved towards the prince. I am came here to find Ichigo and tell him that Kazuki is ready to begin your training and seeing as you two are here as well I will start your as well. Alright I will head to your Ahara shop now, Ichigo says as he leaves, well shall we go as well, Naruto suggests as he places his hand on both the girls shoulders and then they disappeared. Soul Society. I am not insubordinate I am just not hungry you dumbass, Rukia says to Renji, Renji had come to the prison to see Rukia hoping to keep her company. Since the incident, Rukia had not spoken a word to him as what had happened affected her and she hadn't been the same since then. Of course, when he got there he had not expected her to be her usual self and throwing insults at him. Or perhaps you have a trouble with that Mr. Lieutenant, Rukia sarcastically says pissing of Renji, oh so you resent that I became lieutenant before you, I can hear it in the tone of your voice, Renji says already loosing his temper. Oh it would seem that I've hit a nerve, well don't worry Mr. Officer now you have the rank, the pompous attitude and the freaky eyebrows to go with it, Rukia taunts her ex-best friend. Finally loosing it, Renji grabs the bars on Rukia's cell trying to get to her Al the while yelling at her Ho he could kill her for disrespecting him which she just ignored. Say Renji, tell me, am I going to die Renji? Rukia asks as she adopted a somber tone of voice, of course, because of his temper Renji hadn't noticed the change in her attitude. Oh absolutely, for what you did I expect for you to execute it immediately, was Renji's stupid remark still not noticing the seriousness of the situation. Hum I understand, Rukia, said having already known that's what would happen. Ha what do you mean you understand I was just kidding Rukia, it was only a joke, Renji says having not expected her to take what he said seriously. Oh really, then which one is it you idiot, Rukia says staring to become annoyed, an idiot am I, if I am an idiot then why is it that you're the one in the cell, Renji retorted. You're pretty lucky that Captain Kuchiki is probably pleading for clemency for you even as we speak. Here Rukia snorted in disbelief at the ridiculousness of that statement. Please like that would ever happen, Rukia, said her voice deep with sorrow. This was something even Renji was able to notice. What are you saying? A man like Kuchiki would never just sit back and watch as his own sister get executed. Here Rukia gave out a bitter chuckle, which seemed to unnerve Renji a little. You're correct about that. He would rather just kill me himself, she tells Renji whose eyes widen at that comment. I know it for certain because. I know exactly the kind of man he is. Forty years have passed since I have been taken in by the Kuchiki clan and in all those years he has never once looked at me, Rukia says as a single tear ran down her cheek. Urahara shop. No way this amazing, Kazuki exclaimed in an overdramatic way, who would have guessed that all this time there would be a subterranean training ground hidden under my store. Oh forget the acting, obviously you knew this place was down here but, I will admit that it is impressive, Ichigo says getting a chuckle for the ex-reaper. So then, you ready to get down to business? Kazuki asks the teen, yeah let's just get on with it already, Ichigo comments, Kazuki then smacks Ichigo on the forehead with the bottom of his cane. You should always be careful what you ask for, Kazuki comments as he knocks Ichigo's spirit right out of his body, what's the big idea knocking me down like that, Ichigo exclaims. Then Ichigo suddenly falls to the ground as he was finding it hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe when you're in the form of a soul isn't it Ichigo? Kazuki asks although Ichigo knew that it was more like a statement than a question. Right now, your spirit energy has been sealed of thanks to Naruto putting you in a near-death state making you incapable of drawing on your power reserves, Kazuki explains to Ichigo who was give the ex-captain his full attention. Lucky for you that makes getting your soul reaper powers back will be a lot easier than if someone had shattered your hakasui or soul sleep and saketsu or binding chain. So then what do I have to do, Ichigo asked. Suddenly Tessai who had come down along with Jinta appeared behind him and placed a binding spell on his arms. Hey, what the hell is the big idea? Ichigo asks as he raises his head up, then Urahara pressed his cane that had started glowing onto his forehead. Hey what are you? Ichigo then starts filling his power return to him and he could tell that it was a lot stronger than it was before, their eye restore your spiritual energy, and on the fun part, Kazuki says as he moves his glowing cane to Ichigo chest. After tapping his chest once, the chain of fate that connected Ichigo to his body appeared and Kazuki then proceeds to shatter it. Remembering what Kazuki said would happen Ichigo turns ghostly pale, fearing that something bad would happen if he were separated from his body. 
Now that your soul chain has been severed, you no longer are able to return to your body until you become a soul reaper and if you do not become one before the corrosion you will turn into a hollow, Kazuki explains with a grin on his face. Wait what and how am I supposed to do that? Ichigo exclaims freaking out. Well that's the easy part all you have to do is climb out of the hole before the corrosion is finished. Ha huh, hole. What hole? Ichigo asks only to mentally berate himself when a hole suddenly appeared under him, as Ichigo scream while he fell down into the hole, Kazuki just watch him go with a big grin spread across his face. Amaterasu's mansion. Naruto and Yoruichi had finally been able to find Sato, giving him the rundown on the plan to enter Soul Society. Of course, when they told him Ichigo would be going as well he agreed without any hesitation and then they went looking for Uryu, when I found him at a waterfall doing his on training and he declined when they offered him training. So now, we find them at Ami's mansion within the dojo, alright at time he start your training girls and you Sato can, Amaterasu says as the girls all gave the goddess their full attention. Sato also gave her his full attention eager to start although he didn't show it, now then Sato you will be training with Yoruichi as she will be able to get you up to speed. Okay let's see, Orihime chan we will be working on you calling upon the Shun Shun Rika at will as well and we need to work on your reaction time as well, Ami tells the girl. Right I'll do my best, Orihime says with a serious look on her face she then turned to look towards Naruto who was standing right beside her, Ami smiled as she could tell why. Now as for you Tatsuki, you are by far the most interesting human I've met other than my brat of a fiancé over there, Ami said ignoring Naruto as he shouted hey out at her. Of course hearing that made Tatsuki look confused as she wondered what his was so special about her, exactly what are my powers supposed to be exactly. Well here let me show you, Naruto says as he hand her a sheet of paper, confused at first, she looked at the paper and then to Naruto who gave her a nod. As she takes the paper from him, it suddenly bursts into flames freaking her out, what the hell, it just caught on fire, she proclaimed as she stared at the burned paper in her hands. That was paper made from a tree that we fed an energy known as chakra, which is basically a combination of spiritual and physical energy, Naruto tells her as she gives him a confused look. A combination of the two, she asked. Yes while this is interesting, it's more so the amount that you have which interests us, Ami says, to put it simply you have as much as a mid chunin meaning, you're above a beginner's level and in the intermediate level, Naruto explains. So what do I need to in order to become stronger, Tatsuki asks as she remembered what happened last against that hollow. What we plan to do is to increase your power to that of a mid-level junin in one week, Naruto says, he then began to go through a long chain of hand seals while changing the name of the animals of the zodiac. After stopping on the dog, his clawed hands started to glow red, then he slammed his hand onto the ground, dark world summoning dead zone, Naruto explains in a demonic tone of voice surprising the others. The dojo was suddenly covered in black and the scene around then changed to look like a world that was completely shrouded in the crimson light of a red sun. The dead zone was a demonic plane that let you know there was no other living soul there except for them, what is this place, it looks like someone's sick image of what hell is supposed to look like Chad thought. We have to train in a place like this, are they insane Tatsuki thought, she then jumps as lightning echo above them, which also scared Orihime. Welcome to the devil's playground A, K, A, the dead zone, Amaterasu says to the girls and Sato who at this point were scared for their lives as they saw both Naruto and Ami's eyes glow red and their multiple tails and ears appeared. Now let the training and torture begin, Amaterasu says as a dark grin spread across her face. The dojo was suddenly covered in black and the scene around then changed to look like a world that was completely shrouded in the crimson light of a red sun. The dead zone was a demonic plane that let you know there was no other living soul there except for them, what is this place? It looks like someone's sick image of what hell is supposed to look like Chad thought. We have to train in a place like this, are they insane Tatsuki thought, she then jumps as lightning echo above them, which also scared Orihime. Welcome to the devil's playground A, K, A, the dead zone, Amaterasu says to the girls and Sato who at this point were scared for their lives as they saw both Naruto and Amy's eyes glow red and their multiple tails and ears appeared. Now let the training and torture begin. Amaterasu says as a dark grin spread across her face. Those who are born in hellfire now the first lesson for you will be to awaken the fire within yourself, Amaterasu explains as she held out her hand and created a black flame. Tatsuki stared at the fire in awe, as it was very different from any fire that she had seen before. The flame within the palm of Amy's hand then grew in size until it was as big as basketball, no let the first trial of fire begin, Amy says as she fires the black flame at Tatsuki. Reacting on instinct, Tatsuki was able to dodge the goddess of the sun's flame, what the he, 
whatever Tatsuki was about to say die when she stared into the demonic visage of the Empress of Hell. If you waste time talking, you will die, focus on surviving this and you will learn to wield fire, Amy tells her as she began shooting fireballs at the poor girl, who could only run and dodge lest she be burned alive. Orihime watched this scene play out, with a worried look on her face, hoping that Tatsuki did not get hurt, she will be fine Orihime, do not worry, Naruto reassures her. Orihime jumped in surprise, as had forgotten that he was standing next her, Naruto chuckled as she to stutter out an apology. There is nothing you need to apologize for, the demon tells her reassuringly. It's time for your training to start, so I need you to hold out your hands, Naruto tells her, after she held out her arms, Naruto began to draw seals on her. This training will increase your speed, what I'm making is a seal that will help you build up speed, Naruto explains as he finishes the seal. Once he activated the seal, Orihime felt a tremendous force pull her to the ground had Naruto failed to catch her, my body, it feels heavy, Orihime says as she holds onto Naruto. It has taken affect, I have placed the weights at five times normal gravity, Naruto explains to Orihime. Orihime stared at the seals in awe, it's amazing that Naruto can control gravity with these markings she thought as Naruto helped her stand on her feet. Now I need you to do five laps and then fifty push-ups and sit-ups, once that's done we will be working on controlling your powers, Naruto says as he lets go of Orihime, only for her to fall to her knees. Well at least she was able to keep from falling flat on her face Naruto thought as he watches Orihime struggle to stand on her own. Yoruichi, who was training Sado, had the Mexican teen focusing on controlling his powers, walks over to Naruto and smacked him on the ass. I never knew that you were a sadist Naruto-kun, Yoruichi purred into Naruto's ear while she wraps her arms around his neck. I can understand the Lady Amy over there, as she is a war goddess but you well I guess it would make sense considering what you are, Foxy-kun, she says as she began to nibble on Naruto's ear. Naruto groaned in annoyance and pleasure at that nickname and because of her skillful technique on his hybrid ears. Please don't call me that, it's bad enough Tenko-chan calls me that when she tries to seduce me into mating with her, I don't need you calling me that, Naruto tells the Flash Goddess. Yoruichi flashed the prince a teasing grin, this told Naruto that she would never let him live that name down, much to his dismay. Oh, from what Amaterasu has told me, she had an attraction to you since that day she took care of you after one of your techniques backfired during training, Yoruichi states. Yeah it was definitely unexpected, however that was the day I met someone other than Amy who wasn't apprehensive of a former human becoming the new prince of hell, Naruto says. Naruto then looks towards where Tenko was, to see that she was not too far from where he and Yoruichi stood and that she was wearing a track short along with some shorts that barely passed mid-thigh. If that wasn't enough to kill a man, then her performing the most erotic stretching poses while she was on the ground doing the splits was enough to come close to killing Naruto. Tenko who felt Naruto's gaze settle on her, turned towards him to meet his gaze as a small blush spread across her cheeks, Tenko's lips curved into a smile as she turned away from him in order to continue her light workout. You sure you're not going to take her up on her offer, why don't we all have a little fun tonight, the flash goddess suggests as she runs her hand from her breasts to her ass. Naruto licked his lips at the thought of an orgy with the four of them, as he thought this, Naruto missed the lustful gaze that Tenko was giving him. I will think about it, however we need to focus on the girls and Sado's training, Naruto said as he went to Orihime who had finally collapsed from exhaustion. Satisfied with his answer for the time being, Yoruichi focus her attention on Sato's training. Ichigo's inner world. Can you hear me, Ichigo? A deep voice called out awakening a slumbering Ichigo, looking at his surroundings, Ichigo notices that he was not in Urahara's shop anymore. Over here, that same voice that had awoken him says, turning to where he heard the voice was come from Ichigo, came face to face with a man with long black hair, the man looked to be middle-aged and wore a black cloak and sunglasses. Who are you? Ichigo asks the strange man who just stare at him without showing any emotion, what are you talking about, it's me, Zanjetsu, the spirit says to Ichigo who stared at him in confusion. I didn't even hear his full name, Ichigo thought, I see, so my voice is still unable to reach you, oh sad, perhaps you can tell me how many times must I cry out for you to hear me, Zanjetsu says in agitation. After all, there is no one out there that knows me better than you do, the spirit tells him, well sorry but, I don't know anyone as depressing as you, Ichigo states becoming irritated, suddenly Ichigo realized that the man wasn't standing of the build and seemed to be floating on air. How did you, it's like you're just floating on air, Ichigo says, hum you surprise me, how? Could you just sit there in a place like that? Zanjetsu asks. 
Ichigo then begins to fall from the building, screaming along the way down. Zanjetsu then falls towards him and gave him some advice on how to regain his powers. Urahara Shop. Ichigo screams in agony as the white mask of the hollow tried to overtake his body and transform him. The final encroachment had destroyed what little of the soul chain that was left on his body, leaving the hole that would mark him as a dark spirit. After this happened, a white liquid began to pour of his eyes and mouth as he felt his spiritual body rip itself apart. It seems as though he will become a hollow after all. Oh well I guess I wasn't strong enough to resist the final encroachment. Jinda commits as he climbs out of the hole they had trapped Ichigo in three days ago. This did not sit well with Ururu as she looked about ready to jump down there to help him, I've got to help him or he might actually become a hollow, Ururu tells her brother as she holds out her fist. However, before she was able to move Kazuki stops her from going down there, hold it, just stay where you are and watch him closely, Mr. Hat and Clogs says gaining Ururu and Jinta's attention. Usually when a soul transforms from a plus to a hollow, the spiritual body explodes and then it's supposed to reform but, in Ichigo's case the order is all mixed up and the mask is being made while the body is still intact, Kazuki explains shocking both teens. This is all a sign that Ichigo is resisting the transformation, Kazuki tells them, now there is still a strong possibility that he will become a soul reaper, so let's watch a while, and see. Of course, if he should still become a hollow after this, Kazuki let the threat hang in the air, knowing that those two teens knew what he meant when he told that. Suddenly, Ichigo's power began to skyrocket in the spell that Tessai had placed on him, binding his arms began to break apart, seeing this, Tessai then began to place more keto binding spells on Ichigo's body. The binding spells were unable to hold Ichigo for more than 10 seconds before he viciously destroys all of them and burst from the hole, creating a dust cloud. Kazuki, Jinta, and Ururu all had to cover their faces with their arms as the dust rushed past them. As the dust cleared, a lone figure stood within the cloud, once they got a good look at the person, they realized that it was Ichigo and that he had a mask covering his face. A Shiakusho in a mask, but how is that possible, Jinta asked, is he a hollow or a soul reaper? Suddenly Jinta and Ururu got into their fighting stances as Ichigo began to move towards them. Ichigo then grabs the hollow mask and pulls it from his face, placing it on top of his head. Ichigo was also somewhat buffer than he had been when he was a reaper with Rukia's powers. Jinta and Ururu stare at Ichigo with caution, as he seemed to be emitting a somewhat darker energy, Ichigo sighed as he finally was back in control of his body. Well now, it would seem that you have were able reawakened your soul energy, so congratulations, Kazuki states lightheartedly. To the others and Tessai who had just emerged from the hole, seemed as though Kazuki was not bothered by the whole change, it would seem that lesson 2 is now completed. Ichigo, who had enough of Kazuki attitude, deck him right in the face, knocking Urahara a few steps back, oh shut up, and stop with all the fake tears, Ichigo states as he stood over Urahara who was nursing his poor nose. I bet you thought that I wouldn't even make it, so I swore to myself that you would be the first person I killed once I got my powers back and escaped that hole, the half-breed declared. Well I have to say that your time was perfect, with all of your spirit we should be able to get you started on lesson 3, Kazuki tells him, completely ignoring the agitated look on his face. What did you just say to me? Ichigo growled at the former captain, and the best part of lesson 3 is that, there is no time limit, he tells the hybrid. All you need to do in order to complete lesson 3 is to knock off my hat with you Zanpakuto, Kazuki tells the half-breed, Kazuki then had to take a step back, as Ichigo tries to cut him in half with his soul cutter blade. Hum not bad, Kazuki states as he stares at Ichigo with a look on face that said he was not that impressed. It would seem that you have become somewhat stronger than you originally were thanks to the new powers, even though that huge sword is useless. Yeah I wonder about these powers myself, Ichigo states, however I wouldn't be so smug, because I haven't gotten down to business yet, Ichigo states with a cocky grin spread across his face. So then, why don't we forget about, the no time limit concept, as I believe that we could finish this in 5 minutes, Ichigo declares as he points his sword at Kazuki who stared at him with a blank look. That sounds good to me, 5 minutes is all the time you need, is that right? Kazuki says as he pulls a sword from the cane that he always walks around with every day. Well then bring it, Kazuki says, as he lounges at Ichigo. Ichigo dodges and begins to run from Kazuki, who would not let up on the attack. Hey not bad, considering that you're only using a kitty sword, Ichigo says as he jumps away from Kazuki who kept on swinging his cane sword around like a retard. Oh what a compliment student. Don't expect me to go easy on you, Kazuki says while laughing like an idiot. Hey wait a minute. 
Why am I running away from him? I thought that only a Zanpakuto could kill a Reaper and Hollows however. I saw Mr. Haddon Clogs pull out that sword from his cane Ichigo thought as he stops running. So that means that the sword can't possibly be a Zanpakuto, so even if he hits me I should be perfectly fine since he can't cut me, as this thought runs though Ichigo's head Kazuki proves that he could have easy killed him with the sword. You let your guard down, did you really think that just because I am not a reaper that I would not possess a Zanpakuto, how naive, Kazuki says as he hold the cane sword out in front of his body. Now awaken Benahime, and with that, Kazuki's sword transformed into a sleek medium-sized sword, Ichigo stared at the sword in shock as he remembers when Renji had called out the name of his sword. A name for my Zanpakuto, Ichigo says out loud still in shock about the whole experience. Yes, each Zanpakuto carries their own unique name, this one right in my hand is Benahime, the Red Princess, Kazuki state as swings the sword at Ichigo, the blade's power sending him to the ground a few feet back. Kazuki that lounges at Ichigo with Benahime which Ichigo had blocked with his sword, pushing Kazuki back, Ichigo jumps at Kazuki and tries to get him with a vertical lash. Kazuki blocked with his sword, but he still got pushed back, just by the amount of force Ichigo had put behind his attack. Well it seems that my sword is still stronger than yours, Ichigo says as he applied more pressure, which to his annoyance didn't seem to phase Kazuki. So you believe that the weak blade of yours is enough to spot Benahime, don't make me laugh, and then much to Ichigo's horror, Benahime cut right through his sword like a knife through butter. Ichigo acting on instinct once again began to run, however this time Kazuki was able to catch up to him easily and began to cut up the sword until there was nothing left but the hilt. So what will you do now Ichigo, well I will tell you this before we resume this fight, if you try to come at me with only that hilt of you sword, I will kill you, Kazuki says as his spiritual energy began to flow from his body. Why is this happening, this is pathetic, is this really all I can do, am I this weak? It's pathetic these were thoughts that ran through Ichigo's mind as he tried to run from Kazuki, knowing that if he tried to fight back he would on get himself killed. Yes that's you, Zanjetsu says as he appeared before Ichigo, Master, it's you, Ichigo says surprised to see the man standing there in front of him. Why are you running away Ichigo, you still haven't called out to me yet, Zanjetsu says to his master. Face forward Ichigo and you should be able to hear my name, the only thing plugging your ears is your own fear. After hearing. This from the man Ichigo had stopped running and his spiritual energy began to increase at an alarming rate. Jinta, Ururu, and Tesai who had escaped from the hole, all had to hide behind a large rock so as not to be in Kazuki's way as he fought Ichigo, when they saw Ichigo stop running and his energy skyrocket, they had to shield their eyes from the flying dust. Zanjetsu, Ichigo says as the dust clear revealing that his hilt and become a huge meat cleaver like blade. Oh so you have finally unlocked your Shikai, now we can really star your lesson. Kazuki tells Ichigo who just stared at him. I am sorry for this Urahara, but I hope you were able to dodge this, Ichigo tells Kazuki, confusing the man. It would seem that I can't control my powers just yet, Ichigo says as he raises the cleaver above his head. Reacting on instinct alone, Kazuki was able to shield himself from the blast Ichigo had sent towards him. That was close, if I had been just a little slower, I could have lost an arm right then and there. Kazuki says as he went to retrieve his hat that had been blown off his head. Well I got to say, you are one scary child Ichigo. Back at Amy's mansion, Tatsuki seemed to be getting discouraged about the training method she was doing with the sun goddess, it had been three days and she still had not gained the ability to control her flames. Why? Why can't I control it? What am I doing wrong and as these thoughts ran through Tatsuki's head, her movements began to become sluggish and Amaterasu's flames began to catch up to her. Naruto and Yoruichi were able to see that she was currently running on fumes and they both were having serious doubts about her controlling her fire. Orihime had once again passed out after some hard training with the weights that Naruto had placed on her. Sado was also out of commission because he used up all of his energy, Naruto had taken them from the dead zone and placed them in one of the house's spare rooms. This is not good, it would seem that her powers are still out of her reach. Naruto tells Yoruichi as they watch Tatsuki work almost frantically to avoid the black flames. I notice this as well if she is not able to gain control soon then we might have to leave her behind, Yoruichi tells Naruto. Amaterasu had started to grow tired of this training method of chasing Tatsuki with the black flames, therefore, she decided to blast the black flames a few inches in front of her face. Tatsuki freezes as she stares into the flames in fear, why, must I be so weak she thought as she turned to Amy who stared Tatsuki right in the eye with a blank stare and the black flame within her hands. I very disappointed in you, 
Tatsuki. Amy says as Tatsuki tried to back away from the goddess only to fall to the ground. What a waste. I guess that there is no hope for you and since you are of no use, suddenly Amaterasu's black fire grows in size. Wait she wouldn't, would she? Yoruichi asked Naruto who looked watched in curiosity. What are you doing Amy-chan? Have you learned something about her powers and why they haven't emerged yet? Naruto thought as he told Yoruichi to watch. I guess you are no longer needed however, I have no reason to keep you alive as I hate weaklings, Amy says as she holds the black flames right in front of her face. Why am I so weak was the last thought that ran through Tatsuki's mind as she is engulfed in the black flames. Unknown location. Hey are you awake, come on Tatsuki, an angelic voice echoes through Tatsuki's mind, where am I, who's calling me Tatsuki thought. Tatsuki-sama it's time for you to awaken now, the voice tells her, opening her eyes, Tatsuki found that she was no longer in the dead zone but was apparently lying outside under the light of a blood-red moon. Sitting up, Tatsuki realized that she was not only outside but she was no longer in Karakura town. Oh great so I have descended to hell, Tatsuki mumbles to herself, you are not in hell, you are currently within your own mind, a booming voice says, as a giant firebird flew over her, what the hell? Tatsuki shouts and shook as the bird lands before her in all its fiery glory, so we finally meet after a long time, my mistress, the phoenix says as it stares directly into Tatsuki's eyes piercing her soul, thanks for watching.